Welcome everybody. This is Alex for the Coaster Spot. Obviously, no roller coasters today, but that's what our channel is mainly about. So, if you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if not, let's continue on about the new Harry Potter exhibit uh, debuting just this past week. We were able to go to the preview party and check it out, and we'll tell you all about it. Uh, this is the second iteration of the exhibit. It started back in 2009 and went to about 2020. And now they brought it back and added more things and completely revamped it. First off, let's go with what you can expect from the pricing. Here it is currently. Uh, it will vary a little bit depending on your uh, situation. And what I really want to point out is if you want to save a little money and you're not really interested in the rest of your museum, you can save a little bit of money by going nights where the rest of the museum is closed and probably going to have a older crowd to less children running around if that's something you're interested in. Uh, but moving on, uh, you start out the exhibit by getting an RFID wristband and then inputting your name and your email and your house and your Patronus and your wand and all that stuff. And uh, I never received any emails and uh, we'll talk about that in a second, which is one of, I think, the one little disappointing thing about this thing. But with the RFID wristband, which probably is the newest part of the exhibit, um, I really wish I could tell you how it differs from prior iterations, but I, I never saw it, as I said. But uh, when you get into one of the first rooms, you can scan your band, and then your name's going to come up on the Marauder map uh, in a fantastic display. And then later on, you can continue to scan your band around the exhibit and do little uh, activities and uh, spells and all that stuff. And then when you complete it properly, uh, it uh, gives you uh, 10 points to your house and, and plays a little bit of a clip related to what you're doing. And then uh, going all around the exhibit, it covers like every single part of Harry Potter in the universe. For someone who read most of the books, saw all the movies, has spent countless hours in the Wizarding Worlds down in Orlando and in Hollywood, I, I really enjoyed this. I, I'm not a super fan, but I am definitely a fan of the series. So I was really excited to try this exhibit out and it's really good. So good that we will go back actually. So you should hit that bell for instant notifications when videos come out because we're gonna do a, a more of a vlog instead of an informational video later on and, and see the entire museum as well since I've never done that on the channel. And it is the museum that I grew up loving and visiting as a child. So I've been wanting to do that for a while. But let's continue on. You're gonna start with seeing all the different houses and it has you know descriptions of the origin of each house and then like some of the major characters from each house with their wardrobe and you know these are screen use artifacts so that's very cool to see these things that you've seen on screen uh, from these multi-million dollar movies right there in person and you can practically almost reach out and touch them they're so close which is uh, fantastic, right? And then it just keeps going on. And every time you think you're running out of uh, content, f th there's another room. Uh, it goes over the wands. The wand room is really cool because the wands are like 10 sizes bigger than they should be. So they're like floor to ceiling big with like with really detail uh, put into them. It's it's fantastic. And, and then you have Hagrid's Hut that you can go in and get a photo op. And there are a lot of those too. There's lots of places to get photo ops. It's very encouraged. Like uh, Harry Potter's little nook under the stairs. That was a lot of fun to kind of scoot into and check out. And then, you know, it's, it's a lot of practical. There's not a lot of screen-based stuff on here. But when there is screen-based stuff, it is done really well, I think. Uh, like the Great Hall, that, that was really cool how it kind of started rotating through the seasons because uh you know in the movies you saw how they were always dressed up differently depending on what season it was so that was neat and then uh you know it gets into uh newer parts of the the series you know it goes into the fantastic beast it goes into harry potter and the cursed child which is the broadway play um i've seen the broadway play so it was nice to see some elements from there i've never seen fantastic beasts so all that stuff was new to me and i got to learn a little bit about it and made me want to finally go see those movies it really does cover everything and uh the rfid wristbands i the only thing that's really disappointing about them is that you you do all these things around the exhibit but i kind of wish there had been an end game to it like a summary when you tapped in right at the last room the previous exhibit the Corilla exhibit did that and uh, th 
that just felt like it was missing. And I, as soon as we got to the gift shop, which is absolutely fantastic, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, yeah, I put my email in, but I never got anything. So I don't know if that was just because it was the preview night, but you know, we'll make another video and find out if anything has changed. They were still adjusting and, and making the exhibit better. Most of the people who worked on the exhibit were going through with us at the same time. So we heard them making comments about how they need to adjust this a little bit and just that a little bit. And it's that attention to detail that's absolutely fantastic from exhibits like this and the Franklin Institute themselves. And this, as I said, this is the worldwide premiere of this exhibit. It will be traveling all around the world and it's starting here in Philadelphia. And if you want to know more about the dates uh that are uh it's touring as soon as they are announced i'll put them down in the description below so you'll know where uh it is currently uh, but i think that's about it all i can say is uh definitely go out and check it out it's uh definitely worth your time if you're mildly interested in harry potter so the only thing left to do is just show you the merch a little bit the store as you exit the exhibit it has different sections with house specific merchandise and then merchandise for the exhibit itself it has some chocolate and sweets uh very similar to stuff that we've seen down in the uh wizarding worlds and then of course you can get some butter beer it's it's just uh bottled though it's not uh on tap or anything like that unfortunately and the pricing is uh it's a little high but it's uh it's a great place to spend your money because a lot of it goes towards the museum which is an absolute fantastic museum so definitely spend your money there if there are any questions that you have about the exhibit, I will do my best to answer them down in the comments section below. Uh, or just comment down below what you think of the new exhibit or if you've done the previous one and how it you think it compares to it, if it's better or if it's a downgrade. I don't know. Uh, but that's, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Alex for The Coaster Spot. See you real soon.